fellow Sierra Leoneans, this na Dr. Sylvia Olainka Blyden, and today, Monday, June 6th, 2022. This na the 72nd audio in the ongoing series of broadcasts to the people of Sierra Leone. We go call them audio number 072. Before I go further, I want to inform on us say, we nation, we country, they at a critical crossroads where the country needs the best and the brightest and the most intelligent, analytical and patriotic minds them for come forward now and ensure we guide Sierra Leone through these crossroads until we get to a correct and safe destination. Sierra Leone day at a critical crossroads and the country need the best, the brightest, the most intelligent, the one then with very good analytical skills, the one then with experience, the one then with knowledge about this country in history, about this country in politics, and the one then we're able to help the people of Sierra Leone for chart the way forward in a correct manner. Fellow Sierra Leoneans, having said that, I want for assure on say in the coming days, at the increase, the speed, and the rate at which I the issue out my audio broadcasts. I consider myself Dr. Sylvia Olainka Blyden, an officer of the Order of the Rochelle, to be one of the most patriotic citizens them where this country don't ever produce. I consider myself as somebody who is selfless in my service to this nation. I consider myself as somebody who is courageous and always able for speak truth to power inside this country. And I no say that the truth where I mean they speak to power make the late former president of blessed memory, His Excellency Alaji Dr. Ahmad Tijan Kaba, identify me at a very tender age of only 35 years inside this country. 15 years ago, the late former president identify me out of millions of Sierra Leoneans as somebody we trustworthy, as somebody we patriotic, as somebody we insist tell me, say if he die, he no say if somebody like Sylvia Blyden they inside Sierra Leone, he no say Sierra Leone no go go in the wrong direction. Those were his words to me. So 15 years ago, the late former president, Amati Jan Kaba, he identified me and he tell the whole country, he said, when I see this woman, I they make him the youngest ever person in the history of Sierra Leone, where they get an officer of the Order of the Roquel Award. He said, and they do it deliberately because I have seen in her trustworthiness, loyalty to the state, patriotism. 
And so I'm going to make her an officer of the order of the Rokel. At the age of 35 years, I became the youngest person in this country for receive that kind of high national honor day. Pakaba nomin Chris, he knew what he saw in me. And I they are shown a fellow Sierra Leoneans that just as I promised the late former president that I will never let this country down. I will never let this country down. I they talk and so me hear the rise because I they say I'm from the bottom of my heart that ever since I started my activism over 30 years ago, I no one day do anything way for destabilize this country or way for create any negativity for this country. Every time I speak, every time I talk, every time I act in the interest of Sierra Leone, it has been done with trustworthiness, with loyalty and with the truth. So at this critical point in time, I have no intention of letting down the late former president in confidence where he reposed in me 15 years ago. He identified me as a 35 year old woman. He identified me out of millions of Sierra Leoneans. And he said to you, our trustworthy compatriot, Dr. Sylvia Olainka Blyden, I did decorate you as an officer of the Order of the Rokel. I will never let that old man down. Similarly, the family there was a come out. Me great, 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 great grandfathers them. They make them mark on the annals of history. Not to me, who can't join for do anything, we will bring disrepute to the great mark and great legacy we then left in this world. Not just Sierra Leone, not just Africa, but the whole world. Me legacy, the son of Akari. I can never bring it to disrepute. When I speak for my country, I speak from a position of truth. I speak from a position of patriotism. And I speak from a position of trustworthy and honest service to this country. Me not to thief man. Me not a liar. In fact, I not even sabi how for lie. I always tell people that I don't know how for lie. So when I talk to Ona today, and in all my future audios, I they can speed up the audios them. I they can increase the number of times I put out broadcasts because we day at a critical point where this country needs the brightest, the best, the brave, the courageous one them. We go able to team up and talk the truth for move this country forward. So today, we they can talk on two issues. The first one, now about the census results. And the second one, now about the political party to which I belong, which is the main opposition, All People's Congress Party. This is a party that is a critical part of the country in democracy because it is the main opposition party. So it is a critical part of the democracy. And anything that happens within my party, the All People's Congress, it affects the entire country. So today, I can talk about the APC. One point we very important for be addressed and settled quickly. Let people they understand them. And then I will talk about the census. But as I tell you now, this whole week, I get to produce plenty of audios. In fact, some days I might produce two audios because we don't reach a critical crossroad and we cannot allow 
waiting with man called charlatans that in a fake people them for misguided this country. We have the critical point. We need the best, the brightest, the most intelligent, and the most trustworthy, identified as trustworthy, to be the one for help, for guide this nation forward. Now, my people, I want to start by saying thank you to members and supporters of the All People's Congress Party for when they listen to me and they ignore Anes Baikuruma and Usman Fode Yansane, the misguidance. I want to thank every single member of the APC who listened to me audio them last year. Where they tell Una say, Una not listen Anes Baikuruma, Una not listen Usman Fode Yansane, where they say, make them not come to now. Because it's just going to be a disaster for we, not the APC, if we people them not come out for make them count them. And the audios are there, the advice I give to Una. I quote the relevant laws. I give Una the examples. I show Una what happened, the Commission of Inquiry, where they give the same rubbish advice for boycott. And my colleagues, them, some of them affected today, like today. And I want to tell you thank you. Because clearly, the vast majority of the APC people, they ignore the bad advice, the very bad advice of Usman Fode Yansane, Anes Baikuruma, and all the others who call themselves the leadership of the APC. I want to tell you thank you. Because it is clear from the results that the vast majority of Sierra Leoneans came out to be counted. And it is also clear from the results of the census report that the vast majority of APC supporters and APC members, they came out and got themselves counted. The vast majority of our people in the Western area, they came out and they got themselves counted. The vast majority of our people in the Northwest, they came out and they got themselves counted. The vast majority of our people in the North, Bombali, Tonkolili, Falaba, Koinadugu, they came out and they got themselves counted. The vast majority of Sierra Leoneans and APC supporters, they listened to Dr. Sylvia Olainka Blyden, where he tell them, see, Una not listen Anes by Koroma in bad advice. That man they don't sell this party out. That man they anything way for make the APC come out war war, nay it they do. Una not listen Usman for the Yansane. That man they don't sell this party out. Anything way for make this party they on the back foot, nay it they do. And I tell Una thank you because the vast majority of Una Una listen to me, and una come out, and you got yourselves counted. Now, clearly, not to everybody listen to me. The minority not listen to me. A small amount of people not listen to me. These are people running into hundreds of thousands. Millions then listen to me. But few people, them, the minority, they not listen to me. Then listen to Anes Baikoma. Then listen to Usman Fudi And as a result of this listening, we then listen to them. They refuse to be counted. But their number insignificant as compared to the number will listen to me. So Una will not listen to me. Una will refuse for make them come to I want Una for know something today. The blame. The blame for waiting that can happen to the APC, it rests on your shoulders. Because Una refuse for listening to me. Una prefer for listening to Anes Baikoma way get corruption case na head, he get money laundering case na head. Una prefer for listening to Usman for the Yansane where Incessef gets dubious issues in I head. And Una not listen to me. When me own 
it, it clean so. My fingers clean. There is nothing that the SIPP can use to blackmail me. Nothing. So when I speak, I speak from a clean heart. I speak because I'm not on the blackmail. I speak because I love this country in the manner which let former president Amat Jankaba me don't identify. Say, this is a young lady who loves Sierra Leone. This is a young lady who is courageous in her service to Sierra Leone. This is a young lady who is selfless in her service to Sierra Leone. Una not listen to me. Una prefer for listening to Tiffman Money Londra where they on the blackmail. And today, look at where you have brought our APC party. Because Una refused for come out to be counted, the other side and all when a SIPP strongholds, when a C4C strongholds, they counted them. And so now their numbers are correctly counted. And Una will not listen to me, especially within the central Freetown area. Yes, agree. There is a trend and we have to accept this. That for the past 20 or more years, there has been a migration of people from the Freetown Western Urban Area to the Western Rural Area. This is a fact. Everybody they move away from Freetown, then they go to Regent, then they go to Bathurst, then they go to Charlotte, then they go to Adonkia, then they go to uh, Mambo, then they go to Tombo. Everybody is moving away from Freetown capital as we know it, and they're moving to the Western Rural Area. And when you look at the censuses for the last 20 or more years, it is show that trend. So whenever then they count, the percentage of people within inside Freetown, it they drop. This is not a fact. I repeat, you start from 2004 census to 2015 census to this current census, the pattern is consistent that the numbers in Freetown, Western Urban have been dropping in terms of percentage as compared to the Freetown, I mean, as compared to the Western rural areas. And this is simply because people want to move away from Freetown, Urban and go to more beautiful places in the Western rural areas. So the latest census actually they show with the same trend where over 200,000 more people are in the rural areas of the western area than in the urban city. So that explains the huge drop to some extent in the western urban area. Because a huge number of we don't come out in the free town city. We don't go tap now. Nah, the rural areas, as I don't state them. Regent, Mambo, Charlotte, Gloucester. This is where everybody is staying now. This is a fact. But still, some of Una, na the urban areas. Still, Una no me listen to me. You refuse to be counted. And because you refuse to be counted, Una don't can create problem now for we, now we APC stronghold. Let this be a lesson to you. Stop listening to Anes Baikuruma. He's a dangerous man. Stop listening to Usman Fode Yansane. He's a dangerous man. These people are under blackmail. Until Una realize that these people cannot take the APC to the promised land, Una they waste Una time behind them. The earlier Una realize say, Honest by Koma has a money laundering and corruption, serious, serious criminal cases on his head. And so he's not normal. I mean, when I just look at how the man they treat me, for example, whole day when I did with this man, they cost me because whenever in dog, they cost 
I keep on telling people that boy is just an agent for Anes Baikoma. He's an agent. Whatever you hear the dog, the cuss from Holland about Sylvia Olainka Blyden, now Anes the Duam. Now they tell him it's, it's like a means for intimidate me into silence so that when I stay silent, he can get his way with the blackmail that he's under and he can sell with party out. So all the offensive words they are on at the year and that's the cause against me, me the pity am because with all of what I have done for him in life, the height of ungratefulness, now he don't show me. And everybody where you get common sense, then they see him. See, Anes Baikuma is a very ungrateful man in the way he treated Sylvia Olenka Blyden. But I understand why he's doing this. Now, the first law of nature, he's a selfish man. He needs to protect himself. He gets serious corruption case. So anything where for make sure, say, the SIPP get benefit, like this one, so for the census, it don't sell way out. That noise then they make now. Now, noise then they make. I see Cherry Coco in recent letter, and I will address that letter in a future audio, not today. But all that in a noise, now then they make. And I want you to realize that this census result, there is nothing that can be done against it. Take it from me, my people. We don't form, Una will not come out for be counted. Una allow Anes by Koma for mislead Una. Una don't get an advantage to the SIPP. Because you did not listen to Sylvia Olenka Blyden. So you've given an advantage to the SIPP. You have to start listening to me. You have to start understanding that I have a very clean hands. I get very clean aid. I not get nothing where anybody they will use for blackmail me. Where they bring me out for briefly touch on something before I come to the issue of the uh, APC rules and regulations. You see, me, I consider myself to be one of the most honest and transparent Sierra Leoneans. And they hide by my finger. Whatever they do, I do it publicly, especially if it revolves around issues to do with Sierra Leone. So this issue with the first lady, where are they congratulate them, are they show them affection? I have said it before and I will say it again. I have no political or governance issues with the first lady. The first lady na my small sister, na, na politics me separate we. When I talk to the first lady na for ask him, you don't take your vitamins, you don't drink fruit juice, you drink enough water, you don't rest. Hey, you just come out Ethiopia, you just come out Kenya, you can't go Gambia and you don't rest them. That's what I discuss with her. And I'm proud of her when she gets her successes and I'm, I'm open about it. I'm transparent about it. I know they hide them from her. Say, I like the woman. I'm a small sister. Women get plaba. The plaba don't done. I'm a small sister. I know they hide them. But we have nothing that we discuss that is politics or that is governance or about like in husband in government. One day, we don't discuss that. She's SLPP to the bone. I am APC to the bone. But we get along fantastically well as sisters. And how do we do it? It's checking on each other. If it, several days, nobody not calling company. One person will call and say, hey, how you the duo? We'll not talk to you until you're okay. That's what is between me and her. So when then they come and tell her, say, oh, Sylvia, whatever they do now for SLPP because of you, the senior and first lady. No, 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 no. All of the show now is that we don't have to be enemies because we are in two different political parties. We can still be sisters. We can still check up on each other. I can still check on the welfare. And that's what I do. Check on her welfare. Ask her how in Peking and they do. Ask her how in health. That's the same thing she does for me. Two sisters checking on each other. That's it. Proud of him when he gets successes. Happy for him when he gets successes. And that I want, I think is going to inspire a lot of other young ladies them. For she say, oh, you see how Auntie Sylvia and First Lady, they relate. And they would also know that they can reach across, across party lines. They will be in their red and the other colleague will be in their green and they will still continue their relationship. And they will learn from the lesson, say, what happened with me and Fatima, 
where we separate because of politics and realize say, it's not worth it and we are back. So please, at the hear all the audios, at the hear all the <laughs> insults, all I want to assure those of you who believe in me is continue to believe in me. I am transparent. I am open. I know a lot of APC people, them, where they go and secretly meet with the big guns in the SIPP. They need to tell Una, then they hide them. But me, because I get respect for myself, I get respect for Una, I know they hide them. And I make it open that I have a relationship with the first lady. And she's my sister. Women get problem, we not get problem again. I love her, she loves me, and we're moving forward despite we are in two different political parties. Now, let come to the APC issue. This one, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's just going to be brief. It concerns the proposed rules and regulations where the interim committee, the 21-man committee, don't pull, not do. The 21-man committee chaired by Alfred Peter Conte with Honorable Abdul Kagbo as secretary and other great APC comrades in there like Suleiman Boumne, Honorable Ibrahim Bundu, um, my brother Akakuma, Auntie Emma Simbo. You have, I mean, great people there. I mean, eloquent members of parliament like Lahai Mara, Eron Kuruma. You have fantastic lawyers in there. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a good mix of worthy APC comrades that we should be proud of. But, as I tell you now, when they set up the 21 man committee, where they may begin the talk, say, oh, see if I want to be secretary, see if I want to be, and I, I tell you now, I say, no, I will never be a part of that 21 man committee. Because me, they see far. In this case, let me get this case. This victory, let me get this victory. This glory, let me get this glory. Let me walk, let me write, let me find out all the problems we need for be solved. And if I go join that committee, I'm not go able for the correct the committee as I should correct. Because then I would have to be waiting and call collective responsibility when I all the inside there, when I all agree. And I mean, don't see a problem like this one I don't see so now get for happen. Where I go get for object and challenge them. I mean, don't see them far. I see them from last year. Wait for the member, I try for go join the case quick. Because I mean, don't see certain things them. I mean, don't see certain game. I don't tap on politics. As I be on that, as I be study situation. So I mean, don't study, I mean, don't see certain game they play. So I try for rush for join the case. But after Peter Conte me say, no, he don't want me for join the case. And the judge may agree, say yes, let's still be not join the case. So I may agree that the will of God say I'm not for join the case last year. But Usai we did so now, I get for make sure say the vision where I want for this party ego correctly. Now, before I go further, on a need for understand all political parties then get two levels. All parties across the world, then get two levels. Then get the level where they can call the lower levels. And then they get the level when at the national level, that's the highest level. So all political parties, the structure is you get the national level and then you get what you call the lower levels. Now, for the All People's Congress and most political parties in Sierra Leone, the lower levels, it is start from the level we then call the regional level. That is the provinces, the provincial level. And under the new constitution, the diaspora is considered as a region. So the diaspora and the regions, these are not the, the lower level they start. Then following that, then get the district, then under the, then get the constituency, then under the, then get the wards. And 
to some extent and go all the way the below the world and call the polling center group but then in a just a minute one minute level we're not much significant so the apc party we get the national level and then we get the lower levels which is from the regional diaspora all the way down then get waiting with man called dichotomy dichotomy that is complete sharply different then different there is a complete difference between the two the national levels and the lower levels that dichotomy day is clear inside the apc and inside my next audio i therefore take me time and show now the dichotomy article by article but for today i can straight to the point and the point is this the judgment of justice edgar fisher gave no powers to the 21 man committee for produce rules and regulations above the lower levels i repeat and listen keenly the judgment of justice edgar fisher gave no powers to the Alfred Peter Conte 21 man committee for promulgate rules and regulations for anything other than the lower levels that is the regional the diaspora and downwards they have no business i repeat no business in the national level the election of officers to the national level now, and I might find this unique and shocking, but this is the truth. When you read the judge in judgment, he is very clear, not once, not twice, but three times in the judgment, it is stated the limitations of the mandate of the 21-man committee. So when I see... The 21 man committee, they promulgate rules and regulations for national positions. And they even they go to an extent where <laughs> it's so amusing. It's so funny, you know, then they go and promulgate rules and regulations for the presidential candidate, the flag bearer. Wait, they're not getting man. They're not even get mandate yanda for even put themselves yanda self say, then get voice from presidential candidate elections. They don't. The judge limits the mandate. And as I tell you now, I'm going to be continuing to do audios and I will spend some more time in the next audio where they show now systematically how the judge limits the mandate. So Alfred Peter Contest 21-man committee, they have no business promulgating rules for who qualifies to be a presidential candidate. Not at all. They have no such powers. It's arrogance for even assume, say, then get that power day. They don't have it. Their power, their mandate, everything stops after the regional elections are conducted. Then the PPRC takes over the conduct for supervise the elections of the national officers. The PPRC takes over, not the 21 man committee. It's there in the judgment. They don't even have a mandate to supervise the elections of national officers. They don't. And the promulgation of the rules and regulations, it is for the lower levels, not for the national officers, let alone the presidential candidate. But if I don't reach this party up and the talk, I want to make something clear. Me not there against the 500 million which is proposed, say, if you want to be presidential candidates at APC, you for produce 500 million leons cash. Me not there against them at all. It's a good proposal. I actually support that proposal. And quite frankly, I think, say, 500 million too small. Me feel, say, if you want for really be the APC presidential candidate, you for able knock chest and pull 1 billion leons, put an our bank account. Say me na money man. I know they come for can thief. I they come for can serve. 
So me, quite frankly, I have nothing against the half a billion leons, the 500 million leons we didn't call for. I'm not there against them at all. And let me tell you why I'm not there against them. The Sierra Leone constitution say, you cannot be president if you not belong to a political party. You cannot. And the reason why is because the president get tremendous powers. The president, he get power. So we cannot have somebody where he not get party where they will control her. He forget party, he forget party where they will control her within a state house. He not for just go there on your independence. Otherwise, he go turn demon power. He go turn Satan power. If in party not able to control them. Now for that make you cannot be president if you not get people in behind you. And then people are able to influence you because it is not you alone. You go represent a party. Now, if you they go represent a group of people that will believe in you, for God take the highest seat in the land. You for able for get them people then they for raise money for you. Me, if me want be president in Sierra Leone, I for able get people the way then so believe in me that they are able to raise one billion leons. Then say, yeah, Doctor Sylvia, online can blind them. We don't raise them for you. This don't give ten thousand leons. Then you don't give five thousand leons. Then you don't give ten thousand leons. Then you don't give one million. Then you don't give one thousand dollars. I for able get people the way. Then believe in me, they're able to raise for me easy, easy one. Because 500 million, that's more small money that one day. So me not there against the money. The suggestion say people have to pay 500 million. Me not say if me say me one contest tomorrow and be president. If I knock me chest, people then they come up from all over the world for can pay me five, the 500 million for me. I'm not going to spend one cent for myself. People from all over the world would come with their money. Then go raise them for me. Then go pay for me if I want to be president of Sierra Leone. Because they believe in me. So I know they're against them. But let's get it clear that the 21 man committee, the judge no good, and no such powers. And in tomorrow's audio, I will continue further for educate Una. Because Una needs this education, the 21 man committee. Una really needs the education for know how limited your mandate is. Because when I don't get some kind of arrogance way, we need for clip on a feather than small for on a, on a come to. No judge no ever give on a permission for promulgate rules and regulations for presidential candidates. Finally, I want to tell everybody, say, I still day London. Um, not from London that they do this broadcast, but I'll be back home soon. And, but wherever I am in the world, I dare show that I am going to continue for give broadcast at this critical crossroads with Sierra Leone Fenisef. This note of the time for the best, the brightest, the most patriotic, the most trustworthy for step back because some kind of ungrateful, wretched, and as by chroma, they pay some dog for the attack me. This is not the time for me for be intimidated by Anes by Koma or any of his dogs. I have shown her that wherever I am in the world, at this critical point in time, I am not going to let this country down. No mommy cause not to intimidate me. I'm going to say the truth as I see it and as I know is best for this country at this point in time. So until tomorrow's broadcast, I will now end with the tune of a national anthem. And the reason why I can play the tune of the national anthem is because I can want with the tune they play, make with the reflect on the words, who can they sing, who they sing about the land that we love, our Sierra Leone. Until tomorrow, may God bless we all. Amen.